Welcome to Shovelware Diggers. Our dig team's currently excavating the Soft Key Shareware 2000 Hit Games 2CD Collection. You can find a link in the video description containing the entire directory structure of this archive. Here's what our diggers have for week 181. For more information on how to join the dig team, simply follow the Patreon link in the video description. Now without further ado, let's get started. First up, we have a team dig from James Dunn and Eli Malinsky. Win games backslash GG backslash tea time. I'm gonna guess some kind of golf game. Especially with T spelled T-E-E -E as opposed to T-E-A. Tea time. Um, we got a registration text, help file. Let's check out the help file first. Tea time help index. Um, we got a game board, mouse functions, and a negative mirror. <laughs> okay. Oh, there's a, there's a color scheme you don't see very often. Anyways, the game board has two active areas to receive inputs, the 10x10 grid and the drop boxes at the center right. There is only one drop box for the shareware version. You may register tea time to receive the upgrade version. Huh? Okay, I wonder how that's going to work. Computer randomly generates shapes and puts them in the drop boxes. The player's task is to put any of the two shapes somewhere within the 10x10 grid. Uh... Is that it? Okay, so it almost seems like this is a game where you kind of have to manipulate shapes into a grid. And apparently the negative mirror thing here says the blinking crossbar that divides the playing grid into four quadrants acts as a mirror. When reflections across the mirror are of different colors, the entire respective column or row would be cleared from the grid. Interesting. And apparently the registration fee was only $5 to a uh, Merryware. <laughs> Which, I'm guessing the guy, whoever made this, their name's probably, well, actually, maybe not. Um, do we have more accurate name in here? No, it just says Merryware still for $5. Well, anyways, let's see what we got here. Tea time. Does it maximize? It does. And don't encounter that very often. And I do like the fact that it is, um, yeah, it does resize things pretty appropriately. Well, that's pretty neat. Okay, so I've already seen the uh, help. What's the about box say? Um, still just says Merryware. So whoever made this is pretty much hiding their identity. Although it does seem to be uh, 1993. Okay, so let's start a new game. Um, how many players do you want to play? One player. Or wait. <laughs> Why did it ask me players twice? Maybe I wasn't reading that one right. Why am I not allowed to start again? Do I have to like, okay, stop tournament, save, no. Okay, that's weird. You're not allowed to start a new game unless you stop the current game. Okay, how many games do you want to play? I read that as players for some reason. I want to play one game and I have one player and this is my name. So for game one of one. So this is the shape we have. I'm guessing, whoa, why did it suddenly change color? <laughs> uh, so what happens if I put, okay, I see what's going on. Okay, so it's like, I don't have anywhere I can put that. Although I can put it up at the top area too. Like, the instructions weren't very clear about what exactly it was I was trying to do here. So yeah, this shape right here, I can't put that anywhere. So... Oh, I can rotate it. Yeah, so look at this. This says each shape within a drop box can be manipulated by placing the mouse cursor within the drop box. Then, clicking left mouse button can turn the shape clockwise a quarter turn, and clicking right button can flip the shape on the vertical axis. So, that's basically a very elaborate way of saying, click on the shape in the box to spin it, or right click to flip it. <laughs> That's like no wonder I was, no wonder I missed this. Like this is this, this is a lot of text which actually describes very little. And I don't quite understand the negative image thing going on because like you can see this sort of cross that's sort of um going there but I don't know. So like I mean if I put a shape here 
and then rotate that and put it there. Like, I mean, I can't fill in any of these spots because there's no, like, these are basic um, tetrads, so I can't really put anything into these spots here, so I don't know how it's supposed to, um, how I'm supposed to deal with that, but, so, and that's so weird, because I just put a piece here, and then suddenly this entire section here just disappeared. Like, why did it do that? Look at the amount of text there is just to describe scoring. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay, so then the whole negative mirror thing is basically this weird mechanic where if you create a negative image, a negative mirrored image across from the opposite side, it's like... Like, see, you see this little quadrant, this 5x5 five five section here. If I was to create the negative of any one of these, if I was to create the negative of any one of these columns in this section, then it should destroy the entire column. I think. If I'm reading the instructions right, it is, it's so badly worded. Like, I mean, if I was to rotate like this and put this, or no, wait, rotate it like that and put it here. Yes, I see what happens there. So it actually did destroy the entire column because I created the negative of it, the ne the, the mirror negative of it. <laughs> that is so bizarre. But at least I understand it now. And that's why the color changes. The color changes to indicate when you successfully do that. So let's see if I can actually manipulate that to happen in other places. Because it seems like the goal of the game is to actually clear everything from the board, not fill it up. So yeah, one strategy that seem would seem to potentially be viable would be to only place pieces and sections which are absolutely a negative reversal. So like, I mean, this piece could go like that. But if I did it like this, there you go. Okay, I think I'm starting to figure this out now. Of course, then you end up with pieces like this, where there's no real good place for it. Okay, so it, the color doesn't always change when you manage to when you manage to clear something. So I'm not sure why the color changes at all, but it's good to know that it doesn't always do that. I also have to try and keep in mind that it's also counting across in all directions. So, like, I mean. With this shape here, I mean, there's not really any good places for it from the looks of it, but oh, so that actually caused a chain reaction when I put that piece there because it not only cleared this column, it actually cleared a row up there too. Interesting. So yeah, this is definitely a really challenging puzzle game. <laughs> That's for sure. Like it, like ignoring the fact that there's a time limit on this right now, this is actually really challenging. So I would su suspect for anybody who likes this kind of brain teasing puzzle, this would definitely be something to burn some time. As it stands though, yeah, this is actually, <laughs> this is actually really hard. <laughs> Next up, Anthony has dug up win games backslash puzzle three backslash dial word. Somehow I suspect this is going to be like some kind of phone based word game or something. I don't know. Oh, uh, we got a text file, a write file, and a file id.diz. Dial word version 1.0, a fun utility which will tell you of any words which are contained in a given phone number. All possible letter combinations are calculated, and a list of words is displayed which can then be printed out for reference. Interesting. So is that all it's going to say in all of this? Oh, we actually have a more proper write file here. Um, version 1.092 by Terry Taggart. Dollars or the fun utility, which will tell you any of the words. Yeah, okay. All possible letter combinations are calculated. List of words can be printed out for reference. 29,000 word dictionary? Oh, it's available upon registration. Hmm. So, how many words are in the dictionary now? Um, well, no idea, but the executable is only 65 kilobytes, so it's not going to be that big. 
And apparently it only detects up to seven letter combinations, which kind of makes sense because seven digit telephone numbers. Not quite sure how it is in the rest of the world, but seven digits what is typical telephone number length for prefix and suffix in Canada and the United States. And then area codes are three digits, but and apparently this dial word program is a registration fee of twenty three dollars. And it's twenty dollars on the registration and three dollars for the shipping. So this better work really freaking well for a price like that. Uh, that's actually really hard to read. Light blue on cyan? Dark cyan, even. Okay. <laughs> well, we got a tiny little window here. Which, you know, no maximize button, so props for getting that right. Um, so I'm guessing if we put in any kind of number... Like, well, first of all, okay... <laughs> I already have one complaint about this program, and I haven't even pressed any buttons on it yet. If you're doing this whole thing where the words are going to be found in the phone number, why do you have your dial pad buttons not have the letters on them? Like, really? <laughs> Isn't that like, I, I'm, I know it's like meant to be this little window thing, but come on. Like, use some custom bitmaps or something. Why make it just simple numbers and not have the letters? Also, star and pound? Those don't generally conform to letters, so why would you ever... Oh, they're not even clickable. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Okay, well, let's put something in. 555-7236. Five, 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 it's doing its word search. And... Well, I found nothing for the triple five, but... Ow. Oh, it doesn't even... So I'm not sure exactly what it's doing to try and calculate this, but I wouldn't exactly call this a proper word search if this is the result it's pulling up. It's like, not even... These aren't even words. Like, what is going on here? Isn't there supposed to be a dictionary of, like, six... How many... How many was this? Does it actually say on there? No, it doesn't. Man, it is so hard to see that little X on the thing there. Like, I mean, you're supposed to be able to eliminate words without vowels. I guess we could just show all words? Instead of, like, both of those? 551269? Your phone number includes the digit 1 or 0 or both. There are no corresponding letters for these digits. Thus, all occurrences will contain the respective digit. Um, okay. Uh, give me my list of words. <laughs> all words. None of these are words. Okay, well, I'm going to guess that maybe the registered version actually functions... Like, okay, so we actually do have some words here. We got cow and box and boy, but most of these are not words. They're not words. So I'm not quite sure how you would get away with charging $20 for a program like this when it doesn't seem to perform its most basic functionality. Like, the whole reason for having a registration fee is to, and for having a shareware version, is to convince someone that your program is useful or worth their time to pay money for. But this is not demonstrating that, so why would you pay money for it? Especially that much money. So yeah, that was dial word. Um, not that useful. It might be more useful if it had a proper dictionary going, which it doesn't seem to without registering it. So, yeah, I don't see the point. And our last take for today comes from Dookie. DOS games backslash arcade backslash connects. Connect 4. <laughs> this is going to be a Connect 4 game. I'm just feeling it. I, I, it connects. It's like in the name there. But then it's in the arcade folder. I don't know. Anyways, we got some BGI files, got dat files, demo, score, executable. Yeah, read.me. Let's check that out. Edit read.me. 
So, shareware vendors and BBS sysops. One line description. Oh, I see what's going on. So he's got like a short description, or a very short description, a short description, and the long description. So, connects. Addictive MDA CGA VGA game. Uh, not EGA? <laughs> CGA and VGA, but not EGA. That makes a lot of sense. Great graphics and sound, $15. Well, that doesn't tell us anything. Connects, monochrome, CGA, and VGA graphic sets combined with amazing sounds and simple yet innovative gameplay makes an addictive bestseller. Again, doesn't tell us anything. Okay, long description. From the labs of the crazed shareware game designer, Sean Puckett comes this insanely at... Wait, wait. I recognize this name. Not sure from where, but I recognize this name. Oh, was he the guy who did the, um... There's a game I haven't covered on Ancient DOS games yet. And I'm pretty sure, um, Ross of, of Ross's Game Dungeon covered it. I think this is the guy behind, behind that particular game. I don't know. Pe people in the comments will know what I'm talking about. But, um, separate monochrome CGA, EGA, VJ. Okay, so it's EGA in the long description, but not in the shorter descriptions. Okay. <laughs> Grabs and special effects, all new state of the art sound system, mind stopping Brett bestseller. Okay, there we go. Drop tiles onto a play grid to make connected loops. The longer, the better. That still doesn't tell us much. <laughs> okay, I guess we're just gonna have to play this thing. So, 1141 loading. It's an interesting number. Connects. The game of making ends meet. Copyright 1992 Night Sky. Design and coded by Sean Puckett. So, I'm guessing Night Sky is maybe his um, business thing. Oh. Okay. We've got some kind of special effect that's clearly going too fast, but I turned the cycles down. I guess maybe I have to turn it down even more. So I see what's going on here. So the idea is that you're trying to... Every time you place a piece down, you get more time left, and you're basically trying to make, as I said, loops. You're trying to connect everything together into one big loop, and then that apparently makes points. But then what happens in a situation where... Like it's not showing us. Well, let's just see. So we have different tile sets we can choose from. Okay, that's actually pretty cool, having the different tile sets there. So I just had a long wait for a train, but while waiting, I noticed that the high score screen here has this sort of fireworks effect going on. And then it disappears, and we go back to the title screen. Okay, so um, I think I decided that I'm going to go with this pattern, just because it kind of looks simple enough without being too distracting to me. But in any case... There's an option to kill the sound, but I haven't heard any, um, I haven't heard any sound effects yet. So I'm guessing you have to actually be playing. So objects is to make loops. There's a small point penalty for overlaying tiles, but it is quote unquote legal. In later levels, some board squares will be locked out. Note usage of bridge cross tile is, it is not a corner piece. Okay. Make large loops for better score and combat game speed up. Grow multiple loops at once, so decrease waste. Use bridge tile as a horizontal or vertical bar in a pinch. Okay, so game start. Okay, so I do have mouse control. Um, why is it getting faster and faster, but the timer's not moving? I don't get it. Okay, now it's moving. So I'm guessing I'm just trying to make loops. As the game documentation said. Although I can plan ahead for certain things, I'm thinking. So there's a very specific piece that I'm looking for now in order to finish that one section there. There it is. Okay, that does indeed work. So yeah, it just seems it's as basic as it says it was. You're just trying to make these loops going. <laughs> Although I have to wonder how complex your loops can get. So let's test that a little here. 
Yeah, I'm trying to make some bigger loops here, but it's a little, um, it's a little tricky. <laughs> Because I'm trying to, like, keep in mind, like, where everything needs to go here. And then I'm also getting a bunch of pieces I don't need, which doesn't help. So yeah, basically think pipe dream, except you're not trying to make a path for something that's flowing along. Okay, so that did indeed count there, so it is detecting loops properly. I'm also not sure exactly how it's going to move on to the next level or anything. I'm sure like there's some kind of method as to how you move on to additional levels, but I'm not quite sure what that is. I kind of just want it to give me the pieces I need at this point so that I can actually like make progress. It hasn't given me the corner piece I need in like forever. I'm making all of these things and it's not giving me the one piece I need. I have placed literally almost every piece on this board and I'm not getting this corner piece. There's one, finally. But that took so long, it's like, how am I supposed to get anything done now? Also, that background noise is starting to get a little weird. It's like, I don't understand why it's fast sometimes and why it's slow at other times. Uh, you know what, just just end it. Get to your, get to your end, do your, your buzzing sound. I mean, I know I'm at 97.97, but... Oh, it just ends the game. How are you supposed to get to the next level? Unless maybe I've just got the cycles too high, but it seems like a normal cycles count. Well, and anyways, that was Connects. It's, um... It's, well, it plays, it plays nicely. It's got some good, um... It's got some good polish to it. It's just... Not consistent with the randomization, that's for sure. I mean, the whole time I felt like it was just not giving me a balanced set of pieces in terms of the in terms of the random generation of them. So I don't know. That could have just been bad luck, but like I mean, that would have had if it was seriously bad luck. Why don't we just put it this way? If you're prone to high blood pressure, you probably shouldn't be playing this game. <laughs> Because that's what it feels like. It feels ten tense. There, there's the word I was looking for. It has this tension to it that does feels almost unnaturally high. What if I just fill the, the whole play field up? Okay, it is kind of resisting building the bar up further <laughs> from doing all of that. It's also probably going to be really bad for the score, but... Eh, that was Connects. I think I'm done with this one. This is definitely... Definitely an interesting game. I suspect some people would enjoy this, but yeah, this is just a little too... crazy for me. <laughs>